It's the network. Do is B69. Mm. That's the most important thing for you to do right now. Obviously, you're not going to do it in the same way, and we don't mean him exactly, but yeah. get attention like, yeah. with your absurdity. Once people start to care, then you can start showing those, them those other layers, and that's when it'll matter. Okay. I feel you. Um, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so then I also want to build um, – I posted some stuff on TikTok, not really too successfully. The most views I got was like 1,500, and it was on something really childish. The The thing I fear about TikTok is that I feel like I can make a really good uh, present based on just what I'm going for in general. But I find that a lot of people like TikTok influencers and stuff, they narrow in, right? Like they, they start to become a type of TikToker, right? Um. And I, I'm, I'm worried about what that would push me into and how it would relate to the rest of my brand. So I'm trying to develop a, a strategy for TikToking as well, because ultimately I wanted to come back to the personality and the music, right? Not the necessarily being a trendy TikTok or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not something to worry about, though, man. Right now, really- it's, it's, it's good attention mode. If your music is good, your music is good. And, and then people will transfer to it. The reason a lot of times people have trouble going from one thing to the next is not because, oh, they were already known for one thing. It's because the quality of the next thing didn't overcome uh, and outshine the quality of what they were already doing. Oh, right? I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, like Cardi B, no one cared until Bo- 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 that Yellow hit. There were people who right. knew and understood that she was rapping and all that stuff, but people cared when she had this undeniable hit. Right. Right. So this other thing I want to sell too is the talent because I want to do other things, but I I do want it to be about the talent. It's the same thing, and you have the opportunity to show your talent and all that stuff through TikTok and everything. Right. What these social media platforms are developing are, um, as are true locations and environments. And what I mean by that in the real world. You act a different way at school than you do at home, than you do at the library, than you do at the grocery store, right? Right. And TikTok is an extension, the looser part of a brand where you can just show personality, show some of that that more light and not take it so seriously. Right. Right. Br- Instagram is for most people developed into a, an uptight, very brand conscious aspect of it, right? Right, so yeah. having that separation, people can know I'm going to experience this side of him here, and they ex- they don't expect to see your TikTok version of yourself on right. Instagram anyway. Right, that was what I was going to ask. I noticed a lot of people post their TikToks to their Instagram story. Um, is that effective? And I also um, for the Instagram story, I'm a little bit. Um, uh, I would, I guess, confuse. Just, I don't, I don't really understand uh, what it, what it is that I'm supposed to fulfill on the story and things. I know it keeps attention. I know that it keeps the, the ball rolling, and it, it is more personal than your posts. But I'm not really exactly sure how the best way to utilize the story is because I see some people, you know, they post these, um, like almost like screenshots where they write a bunch of shit. And you have to like read a couple paragraphs. And I, I don't know if that works. I see some people posting memes. I see some people post videos of themselves, which is mostly what I do. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what the most effective way to go about stories is. You need to figure out more on your brand and then understand that it's just an additional channel and figure mm-hmm. out what message you want to communicate. With that. Okay. So it's it is really, not really about conversion and all these things. It's it's subjective, yeah. especially when we're talking about Instagram, when it's not really going to be, hey, you do this thing and you start to build all this organic following off of it. Right. It's going to be, what do you communicate? Like, who are people who already follow you see that, right? So what do you want those people to see versus on that part that they're not going to see on your, your news feed? Right. That, and, and once you figure that out, you can do it as creatively as possible. You can just hop off and talk a lot this way. Yeah. You can do multiple things. You can say, hey, I want to create these really interesting stories. And every time I do something on my story, it's going to 
to like be something that blows people's mind in whatever way. That's that's all up. So to it really is just tailored to whatever your brand is. It's it, there's no algorithm to it or nothing like that. No man, no yes. man. Um, the best, the, the most important thing is when you talk about algorithmically and attention wise, it's just the fact that it's still pretty chronological when you look at the stories. Right. There's other factors, but like when, versus dropping a post, which a lot of people might not see. If you stay super heavy, those people who stay super heavy on their stories, then they stay at the front of people's attention. That's true. I, I, uh, another concern that comes up sometimes is that like I see people like Snoop Dogg or some other of these larger influencers who flood their stories all the time. And I find that a bit, um, that it makes me want to put some distance I know that you you talk about a lot of times in your videos getting people to love your spam. Um, it doesn't make sense though to to have too much on like like on the story. I get that it keeps you at the front of the attention, but I fear about pushing people away in, in that same regard. Is it well? You don't have anybody to push away right now, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to be in those two gears at once, right? Yeah. Like. Don't be in I'm going to manage what I have mode when you should be in hyper growth mode. Right. Makes sense. Right? Yeah. The people who don't matter, they'll fall off. Right. You, you don't want to be as close to the sun when, when it comes to Snoop Dogg being the sun. But some people want to be there. Right. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I had, I had a little input, bro, on what you were saying. I just wanted to give you some perspective. Um, yeah, as um as far as stories go, it's been really effective for me because I haven't I haven't posted on my story. I mean, I haven't posted on like my actual Instagram since October nineteenth because I just chose, hey, I'm gonna take a break from posting. I'm gonna focus just on engaging and just posting on my stories. And it was a really cool way for me to be able to take a break from from posting, but still be able to engage with my followers every day. And like like Brent, like Sean said, it's gonna really depend on your brand. Like for me. You know, I'm more so focused on um, uh, motivational content and empowering people and giving them value that way, you know, mm -hmm. and just speaking on real shit. And right. I don't want to be posting memes all the time. I troll like a motherfucker, right. but I don't feel like posting memes all down my, my Instagram feed. So stories gives me the chance to do that shit posting. And as far as posting a lot, if what you're posting is interesting, people will still tap in. Like I've had days where I'm bored and I shit post like probably 10 memes. And each story will be getting anywhere from 160 to 300 views, you know, because the memes are funny. Them? Do you get engagement with them, though, or do you just get them seen? I get uh, reactions, which is good because those start conversations. So right. posting, yeah. like you said, absurd shit is good because you get reactions out of people. I post right. absurd, funny ass shit on my on my stories and I get reactions all the time. And I wind up talking to people from the reactions. You know, you, once they react to your story, they in your DM. Now right. you can start a conversation to talk to them and stuff. And now you Facts. built a relationship with someone and they ain't even heard your music. Facts. Yeah. You one know, of the so best guys. Definitely effective. They're one of the best guys I know who posts very, very heavily. Um, I mean, you guys wouldn't know him, but this is an artist. And he, um, like, ah, he, it's crazy how much he would post during a lot of specific periods. But the thing is, he's usually sharing his thoughts and aesthetics that inspire him, all these things. So you're getting input into his POV. Into, mm. input into his mind so it's interesting even if you're not directly communicating you're developing a deeper relationship and getting deeper into his world just by all the type of stuff that he's sharing because it's not hey even oh i just think this meme is funny for him it's more you know this is what's inspiring me right now and i want to be like diddy and jay-z together and he'll be sharing aesthetics from that period all the time and pictures from that period that inspire him and that then makes sense. Like, it's all that kind of stuff so mm. like it's about getting your message across it's like or i mean well, for some people it's about getting a message across um and i don't even think he over really intentionally does it it's, for him it's just so natural and mm -hmm. then but some people you know it's just about an extra way and different way to communicate to people in a more light-hearted manner right yes yeah. whatever you choose though man yeah i appreciate that it's the network <laughs>